Today, we are going to be looking at cellular respiration. Uh, what does it mean and what does it involve? When you talk about cellular respiration, it means that what you are going to, or the process which is going to take place is going to take place in the cell. And the respiration, yeah, it, it, it means that that process either is going to require uh, oxygen uh, in uh, being present or oxygen being absent. So basically, this is the process by which energy is produced in, uh, in, 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 in a cell or in our bodies. And then uh, this process, uh, since uh, it is called the cellular, it means that it is occurring inside the cell. However, not all the parts of the cell that you are going to find are uh, this respiration. It has a specific part where it's supposed to take place. Welcome to cellular respiration. Let's go into detail. When we talk about cell respiration, is a process, is a process uh, whereby glucose is broken down gradually in presence of oxygen, and then it can be or in absence of oxygen, but the two uh, will produce what we call energy. So the major purpose of this uh, respiration is to produce energy. This process is basically a chemical process. It means that involves chemicals so that uh, this process can take place. Which chemicals are in there? We, we, we have what called the raw materials, the things which are supposed to be present, in, uh, and also you have what you call the uh, enzymes. So the enzymes are also supposed to be present so that uh, this process can take place. So uh, that's what we call the cellular respiration. We have two types of cellular respiration. Uh, the first type is called aerobic respiration. The second one is called anaerobic respiration. The difference, the major difference between the two is that aerobic respiration occurs inside the, uh, the cell, but it must have what you call oxygen. Oxygen must be present. So the key point here, it must be presence of oxygen. So aerobic respiration occurs in the presence of oxygen and then anaerobic respiration occurs in the absence in absence in absence of what in absence of oxygen so these two types of respiration why one is occurring in presence of oxygen and why one is occurring in absence of oxygen the two processes yes can occur in one cell but they they, they have uh, advantages and disadvantages yes there the, there is a time when oxygen is 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 is, is abundant therefore we will undergo what you call aerobic respiration and there is a time when oxygen is not there but you require energy yes so what does it mean does it mean that you have to uh, the processes are supposed to, to to stop no now the cell will change you from aerobic respiration and then it undergoes anaerobic respiration where is this condition happening during your daily uh, activities you undergo what you call aerobic respiration why because you are not using oxygen excessively you don't uh, use this oxygen too much therefore you produce maximum energy when you are under aerobic respiration that's why everything is occurring normally but imagine uh, an athletic yes an athletic uh, who is running and uh, running for a long distance time is gonna come when this person has no enough oxygen therefore it means that the, now the cell but this person requires energy because he's still running the, the the process or the race is not yet complete therefore what happens the cell has to change from aerobic respiration to anaerobic respiration however much it, it it produces less energy but that energy can help to maintain the process that person is doing and also the normal functioning of the what of the body hence anaerobic respiration will occur that's why this person opens the mouth so that can take in more oxygen but still that oxygen is not enough to uh produce the en enough energy which is needed hence anaerobic respiration will kick in so what are some of the importance of this energy why do we need energy in in in, in our bodies so energy is needed 
uh, number one, is used uh, by the organisms for various ways. Some of the ways include, yes, growth. Yes, growth requires energy. The, 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 why does it require energy? Because there are so many processes there which are active, and any process which is active, it means that it requires energy. Where is this energy coming from? It comes from respiration. Then number two, cell division. It can be either meiosis or mitosis. These divisions are, are active processes. Therefore, energy is needed for those divisions to take place. Actually, you cannot even grow if there is no cell division. The cell must uh, divide. After that, you have cell elongation. After that, then growth can take place. If the cell divides and then there is no elongation, then it means that it's, it's, it's going to become a, a, a cancerous uh, cell or it's gonna, you're going to suffer from what you call cancer because they're just dividing and there is no increment in the size of these cells. Movement. Sometimes when you are weak, say that I don't have energy, you can't walk for a long distance. Why? Because you are hungry. It means that you don't have energy. Don't forget that when you eat, you, 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 you get the energy. Yes, when you eat, you get the what? You get the energy. So this energy is also used for movement. When you talk about movement, we classify movement, the, the movement of the parts and also locomotion. So when you talk about movement, we are categorizing it or we are... Uh, put it we are putting it into one umbrella it's meaning that uh, uh locomotion and movement of the parts is the same thing so we take it as a movement then we have what called a transport of substances uh, remember we have uh substances moving across the membrane across the neurons uh reabsorption in the nephron there is a lot of things which are supposed to be uh transported you move across somewhere uh so these processes they're active they require energy to for them for, for for them to be able to move from one place to another oh sometimes those the uh substances which are carrying them they require to contract and relax and this contraction require energy hence energy is needed for transport and lastly active transport active transport you know it that uh, you, you you are moving things from a, a, from region of high concentration, no, from region of low concentration to region of high concentration against a concentration gradient. Meaning that you are coming from downhill, going uphill, automatically you will require what we call energy. So, where does respiration takes place? Respiration takes place inside a structure called a mitochondrion. So, Last time we saw the structure of a, 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 a chloroplast. What about now the structure of the mitochondrion? Mitochondrion is also an organelle. If you look at it, it has it has a sausage shape. Yes. I don't know how you draw your sausage. Okay, let me just draw it like that. Yes, it has an outer membrane. The outer membrane is smooth. But it has the inner membrane. The inner membrane is enfolded. Yes, the inner membrane is enfolded. Ne? Yes, the inner membrane is enfolded. You see it that the inner membrane is enfolded. Why is it enfolded? It's enfolded to increase the surface area for this reaction to take place. Yes, that's why when you look at it, it has this enfolded or uh, enfolded uh, uh, surfaces so that the, the, there is an increase in surface area. Imagine that this surface was like this. To run from here up to here is less than from running from here up to here. However much when you look at it, you see that this one is shorter, this one is longer. But you have to run like this, you have to run like this. When you stretch it, it's going to be longer than that. Hence, uh, when it is enfolded, you have a different, different what? Different distance. So it increases the surface area. Yes. So this mitochondria, yes, it has what you call the DNA. It has the DNA which controls its, its, its activities. Therefore, we, we call mitochondria uh, chloroplast. These organelles which have their own DNA, semi-autonomous. They are self-reliant. Halfway, uh, rely, they, they, they don't depend on the cell. However, yes, there are some things which uh, they have to depend on the cell, They're not the general cell, but it is halfway, 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 uh, uh, 
uh, semi-autonomous. It, it is semi-autonomous, halfway autonomous, meaning that semi means half. Yes, semi-autonomous. Then it has a fluid. It has a fluid. This fluid, we call it um, matrix. Remember that for the chloroplast, we say the fluid inside the chloroplast, we call it a stroma. We, we can give you a diff the, the, the question to give the difference between the chloroplast and the mitochondrion. Yes, don't forget that chloroplast is used for photosynthesis while mitochondrion is used for respiration. Yes, so it has that. It does not only stop there because it is supposed to do its own uh, protein, manufacture its own proteins. Therefore, it has some bit of ribosomes. Yes, it has what you call ribosomes in there. Yes, that's why you see them here, uh, these, these ones, yes. Yeah, we call them ribosomes, yes? Then this membrane, we say that it has the outer membrane, which is smooth. It has the inner membrane, which is infolded. But in between these two membranes, there is a space. That space is called the intermembrane space. Intermembrane space. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. So when you are drawing, don't shade. Draw it in a simple way that like this, and then you have, start how to start to label. These extensions are called crystal. Yes, crystal. So those extensions, this is the one I'm talking about. Uh, we call them these infolded things. We call them crystal. So that is a simple structure of uh, a mitochondrion. Why do you need the structure of the mitochondrion? Is because we have to know when you talk about the Krebs cycle, when you talk about oxidative uh, phosphorylation, when you talk about glycolysis, the processes which are involved in respiration, we have to know where exactly these processes are taking place from. So basically, uh, that is uh, what you are supposed to understand better. Let's look at the process of uh, cellular respiration. We said that uh, the process of cell respiration involves uh, the, 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 the involves uh, two processes. We have uh, aerobic respiration and we have anaerobic respiration. And I say that aerobic respiration involves or it needs, it requires what you call energy. So uh, it requires what you call uh, oxygen. For energy to be uh, produced maximally, you require enough oxygen so that uh, this process becomes complete. It's like when you're burning carbon dioxide, when you're burning uh, carbon in presence of oxygen, you complete the process and then you're going to produce carbon dioxide. But if you burn ca carbon in the absence of oxygen, you're gonna, it's going to be halfway. Therefore, you're going to produce carbon monoxide. Hence, the same story here. If respiration occurs in the presence of oxygen, you're going to have maximum energy. Hence, you're going to produce a lot of, uh, yes, you're going to produce maximum uh the, the process is going to be uh completed and you're going to produce maximum energy and then if you don't have enough energy you have limited energy uh if you don't have enough oxygen it means that limited energy is going to be produced why because the process is not going to be complete it's going to be halfway hence anaerobic respiration reduces or produces less energy while aerobic respiration produces a lot of energy so aerobic respiration takes place in uh in the uh in the presence of oxygen as i've explained the first part of aerobic respiration occurs in what you call the cytoplasm the cytoplasm which means that the fluid of the cell cytoplasm the fluid of the what of the cell the second, the other phases of uh, respiration, they occur in the mitochondria, which we call the engine of the the engine of the of the car, meaning that that's where the power horse. Sometimes, uh, student or teachers they classify a mitochondria, uh, mitochondrion as the power horse of the cell. Why? Where that's where power is being produced from. Yes. So you're saying that uh, the requirement for this process of uh, the requirement for this process uh, uh, is uh, oxygen and the glucose, and the byproduct is carbon dioxide as well as water. So as well as water, and the energy is the major product of this uh, process. Uh, don't forget that. Don't forget. Don't forget that. Uh, respiration is the reverse of 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 
photosynthesis. And the photosynthesis is the reverse of respiration. So the products of photosynthesis are the raw material for respiration. And the product of respiration are the raw material for photosynthesis. Don't forget that in, 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 in photosynthesis, you produce oxygen and the glucose. So if you produce oxygen and the glucose, you have to produce you, you produce oxygen and glucose, then you have to, to, to use carbon dioxide and you have to use carbon dioxide and water for that process to take place. But now here you, 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 you have to use oxygen, the product of, 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 of glucose, of um, the product of photosynthesis, use glucose and the and the oxygen, yes, glucose and oxygen, and then now you produce carbon dioxide and water, yes, in the press, and then you produce also what you call ATP. So you guys, listen carefully. Listen carefully. These two, in actual sense, these two processes might be taking place at the same time. Photosynthesis is taking place and also respiration is taking place. Here I'm talking about in plants because in animals we don't have photosynthesis. So because if, if, if photosynthesis does not exist, it means that we don't have life. Yes, it means that we don't have life. So it, it means that glucose plus gl oxygen, um, you're going to produce carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide plus oxygen water plus ATP. The other side, when you use glucose, meaning that it, 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 for the process, the reaction for photosynthesis is going to be the reverse. Carbon dioxide plus water. Actually, also ATP, we use it uh, when, 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 during the, uh, in, in the dark phase. Yes, basically it's the, all of them. You produce glucose plus oxygen. However much oxygen is a byproduct, However much here, also the here is carbon dioxide is a byproduct as it goes to respiration. Yes. So the stages of respiration, of aerobic respiration, the process of aerobic respiration include glycolysis, Krebs cycle, oxidative phosphorylation. Glycolysis, where does it take place? It takes place in the cytoplasm. Uh -huh. Krebs cycle, where does it take place? It takes place in the mitochondrion. We have to, 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 to see exactly where in the mitochondrion does it take place. And then oxidative phosphorylation takes place in the mitochondrion still. That's why I say that the first stage glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm, while the other stages occur in the mitochondrion. So Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation, they occur in the, in the, uh, in the, they occur in the, uh, mitochondrion so i'm going to stop here and then the next class is going to be uh talking about we're going to be talking about these processes glycolysis i'm going to explain them in detail Krebs cycle i explain it in detail so that you understand i know that this is a challenge to many students but by the time i finish this you'll be able to understand it better and you don't have any difficulty don't forget to subscribe like and share to others for our daily new videos yes Thank you very much. See you again in the next class. God bless you.